is for you No matter what you face It's all okay He is for you
in here who may think you know pastor my life's not where it needs to be or you know I want to serve God but I got all these problems you know pastor I just don't want to be a hypocrite I don't want to say I believe one thing and go out and act like something else and, you know I just don't have it all together at this point and I, I'm going to do it someday when I get things together let me tell you what the constant accusation was against Jesus and Jesus loved it they called him Jesus, the friend of sinners. Church people, religious people called him that all the time. And then finally, Jesus one day answered the accusation and said, you know what? He said, it's not the well who need a physician. He said, I came to seek and save that which is lost. He said, I didn't come for the people who think they got it all together. I came for people with problems, people that are broken, people that are depressed, people that are sick, people that are addicted, people that are bound. He said, that's the kind of people that I came for. This misnomer that you got to get it together to come to him, you'll never come to him because it's coming to him that helps you get things together, hallelujah. Would you bow your heads here for just a moment? Close your eyes, everybody across the building. He's your friend today. Don't you let the enemy get in your head and tell you you've gone too far or crossed the line, there's no going back or whatever it is, you've done it too long or too many times. Jesus runs to weakness. Jesus runs to flaws. Jesus runs toward problems. He's not trying to get away from you right now. He's running toward you. Whew, I feel that. If you say, you know, to yourself, I know I don't have it all together. 
but I do want to serve the Lord, Pastor. Let me tell you something. He takes you just like you are. But let me tell you something even more amazing. He never leaves you like you are. So with head bowed and eyes closed, if you say, Pastor, I don't want to leave here today without making my heart right with God. I want to get things right with Him. I want to know Him. If that's you right now, would you just lift your hand in this building? Just me, you, and God looking. Yes, 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 ma'am. Yes, I see your hands. Four hands went up. Five, six hands. Seven hands have gone up. Eight hands. Nine hands. Ten hands. Hallelujah. Wow. Ten hands. Eleven hands. Twelve hands. Thirteen. Fourteen hands have gone up. We got to clap a little better than that. We're not on a golf course. Come on. These people have just said, I'm going to change my life for all eternity right here. Let's don't put it off anymore. Let's pray this prayer. Let's get things right with God. I'm going to ask you to say it boldly. I'm going to ask the praise team to help me. Everybody in the building, ready? Let's go. Thank you, Jesus, that you are mighty to save. And today, I thank you for saving me. I come to you, confessing my sin, giving you my heart, giving you my life. I believe you died and rose on the third day for my salvation. Come live in my heart. Be my Lord and Savior from this moment forward. And I thank you that I am saved. Come on, somebody. Make some noise. Clap your hands. Let's get excited about this. Hallelujah. They may be sitting near you, one of the people who raised their hands, to so take some love and spread it in this building. Hug somebody's neck, shake their hand, introduce yourself. Come on, spread some love in the house. If you just said yes to Jesus, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. We are so glad that you're here. Be sure to connect with us by texting the number at the bottom of your screen. You just made the best decision of your life. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to our online family. Be sure to also get connected by texting the number at the bottom of your screen. We are getting so close to Christmas. Who is ready for Wonderland at Redemption? We are just 12 days away and Redemption has something special planned just for you. So be sure to mark your calendar for our communion and candlelight services for Friday, December 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern and 10 p.m. Eastern. We have a package we want to send to you and your family to participate in our service. Click the link in chat and register for your Wonderland goodie box today. Supplies are limited, so be sure to register today. Now, let's head back into service. Let me answer a question that may be in some's mind, uh, someone's mind. Um, we're still, because COVID knocked us out a year or so, we, we, we're still relatively new to so many people. Um, and, and people may say, why, why, H, why does all the missions go through HCM? I can answer that. Uh, I told a group of pastors one time, everything that I have built, I have built because of what someone did to me. You go through something, then you build something to make sure you don't ever go through that again. Okay? And everything just used to be under one big entity, redemption. We just did everything out of that until I started getting sued. They didn't tell me in Bible school that anybody can sue you for anything. Okay? And uh, a church like this, uh, even a guy like me, there's just a big bullseye on your back and they'll sue for this thing and then try to bleed it into everything else. And so we have now about eight entities where everything runs uh, you know, unto itself. And so hope lives, eats and breathes, giving and helping and doing for other people. So all of the missions giving runs through Hope Cartner Ministries, one of our eight entities here. And 100%, she does not receive a salary. There are no administrative costs in HCM, 100% of what you give goes to where it's supposed to go, 100%. I challenge you to find that anywhere. So that's how we do it. That's why if that was in your mind, this is our time where we give and I usually come to you from a spiritual level, but after Hope talked this morning, I said, I just wanted to further what she said. You can play guitar here anytime, man. I'm gonna tell you this. Here's my thing, if you're gonna play it, act like you wanna play it, amen? 
If I could play a guitar, I'd be doing flips off the stage and all kind of stuff. I'd have my shirt blinking. I'd be doing all kind of things. <coughs> Forgot what I was going to say now. Talking about that blinking shirt, I got excited. This is the moment, you know, we're on 148 nations right now. I mean, can you even wrap your head around that? I mean, uh, in three different languages. All that takes people and all that takes technology and expertise. And it's not our worship and it's not our pre my preaching that makes that possible. It's this moment right here. For those that are shut in and don't even know how to cut on a computer, we're on TV all over the world because of this moment right here. There are three to 500 families who we fill their trunks with food a week. I didn't say give them a meal. We fill bags and put them in their trunk every week. And we do that and those salaries are paid because of this moment right here. So just because you can't see it happening don't mean that your tithe and offering is not making it happen. There are, at the end of the day, I'll get a text. There will be six to 800 people that got yanked out of darkness and pulled into light and are saved forever because of what we're doing right here in this moment. So Father, I ask that you bless the gift and the giver. And I pray this not be the time where we lighten up our commitment to give, but this be a time where we deepen it because you love a cheerful giver. Baptize and immerse this place in generosity. And I pray that as we give, Lord, we give cheerfully with a bell ringing in our heart, with a smile on our face. I ask that you would take and multiply what we give and let it reach far and wide, as far as we can make it go. I thank you that this time is blessed and these people are blessed and this offering is blessed. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Here's all the ways to give. Come on, praise team, let's go. All right, church, come on, let's keep the energy up in this place. Hey, every voice, take a chill up. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. Feeling breaking out, I can't echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. Feeling breaking out. Hey, guys, how are you doing? I'm so glad that you are in God's presence, God's house. You say, well, I'm sitting in my garage or... I'm sitting in my car, I'm sitting in a parking lot, I'm sitting in my office. It doesn't matter if we are assembled together with us, you're in God's house because God's house is not a building, it's people. And you are that house, we are that house. So glad that you're here. This is our time to give. And we are in this Christmas season, listen, where we amp up what we do. We amp up the blessing we try to be to other people. And we're doing everything we can to touch as many people as we can. Would you consider this being your church? Would you consider this being the place where you bring the tithe to God, the offering? I don't know what your relationship to redemption is, but I know we want to care for you and pastor you no matter where you are. And if this is the place you call home, participate in this moment and help this vision go all over the world and do what God has called us to do. Would you do that? Ask God what he would have you to do. And I believe that you will. Listen, don't leave because I'm still in hidden in plain sight and we're getting into some of the best stuff today. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you in a minute. More people are choosing to use text to give as their preferred way of giving because it is safe, quick, and very easy. Here's how it works. Open a new text message on your phone. Send a text to your text to give number. For Ron Carpenter Ministries and iChurch, use 864-920-1282 followed by RCM for Ron Carpenter Ministries or iChurch for iChurch. Then, of course, your gift amount. As you see, 150 would represent $150. Now, the very first time you use the service to give, you will receive a text message with a link to a registration form. Click the link in the text and it will direct you to enter your name and bank card information. You will only have to enter that information once to set up the service. Then it's a matter of seconds to give. It's safe and secure, easy to use, and you will get an instant receipt sent directly to your phone. Add your text to give number in your contact list so you'll have it ready. That's it, Redemption. Giving has never been so easy.
Tell somebody next to you, say, it's about to get real. It's about to get real in here. Amen. Those of you visiting today, I'm so grateful. Um, I'm, an old, I'm an old Southern raised boy with a lot of farm values. I was raised on a farm and I've just been taught nobody owes me anything. And so anytime anybody will give their time, which is the most valuable commodity you have, by the way. Uh, you can get more money, you can get more friends, you can get another car, but you'll never get more time. And when you give your time, at, as you've given the greatest thing you can give. So thank you for coming, and it's my hope and my prayer that when you leave here today, you feel like this has been beneficial to you in a positive way. And if you don't have a church home, I'm not going to make any bones about it. We would love to be your church home. You're sitting around some of the greatest people I've ever known, and I'm so privileged to be their pastor. So great to have you today. And I want to kind of speak to you and everybody else. I'm, I'm a couple of weeks from my last message on this. Hidden in plain sight. And it's just been me wanting to crawl into spiritual things. Um, not, not being a church critic. I don't want to be a church basher. But just really hard to find any modern day platform that's really talking about spiritual things. Uh, you know, they talk about relationships and they talk about how to get along and they, t they talk about all this stuff and all that stuff's good. Uh, and it's in the Bible as well. But people are depressed. People are addicted. Marriages and homes and lives are falling apart. We've got more young people on anxiety medicine and depression medicine than ever in the history of a nation. And a lot of these things are clinical. I'm not so spiritual that I don't understand sometimes they're just clinical problems. But there are also a lot of people that are fighting spiritual things and don't know what they are because where the church is silent, the people struggle. My people perish for lack of knowledge, the Bible says. They perish. And so uh, to me, you know, the Bible talks about generational curses. I spent several Sundays on that, uh, how you can be fighting uh, something that was handed down to you through your bloodline and maybe it was started by somebody you've never even met and you're, and you're fighting things you can't see. Why do I feel this way? Why do I have this desire? Why am I bent toward this? Why do I attract these people? Why do I always want to do this? Why am I always in this cycle? Why does it seem that my life always lands here? And people are fighting this and don't know what's going on. And I'm telling you, there are spiritual dynamics at work and you're fighting things that you can't see. They're generational curses. That's the nature part. The nurture part, we went into yokes where the Bible says the anointing will destroy the yoke and remove the burden. A yoke is what they put around an ox's neck when he was young so that when he got old, they could still control him. And the enemy knows if he can get some type of seed planted in your life, trauma, abandonment, abuse, molestation, rape, if he can get something in there that he can have you dealing with that thing the rest of your life and your life taking an alternative, alternative pattern to what God had planned for you. So we talked about yokes. Last time I preached, we started delving and I'm going to go deep and next week I'm really crawling in, into strongholds. So curses yokes and strongholds. Would you say that with me? Curses, yokes, and strongholds. Strongholds are not out there. I remember people used to sing songs, we're pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are not demonic forces in the sky with, you know, pointed ears, pitchfork tail, and teeth with goo running off of them. They're between your ears. Strongholds are where you believe a lie to be true. If I have a stronghold in your life, it means I've got a place in you by which I can operate. And for the enemy to have a stronghold, it means he, have a, he has a place in your mind where he's got you to believe a lie. Well, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do you know what the enemy has the power to get you to do? He's got the power to lie to you. That's it. And if you believe it, the rest takes care of itself. Because if you believe a lie, you live a lie. 
because what you embrace to be true defines your reality. So that's why he's the Bible calls him the father of lies. He lies all the, well, nobody loves me. Well, that's a lie. For God so loved the world. But you wouldn't believe what people do because they're convinced nobody loves them. That's a stronghold. Well, I just tell you, I believe my life's gonna be like this forever. God has a destiny. God has purpose. God has change. God can turn things around. God can break it. God can resurrect dead things. God, that's not true. It's never going to change. But if you believe it to be true, you'll live it the rest of your life. <laughs> and he knows that. So he's a liar. And where we're going now is we're going to go on a, a journey to expose those lies. Are you on the road with me? Amen. So Father, I ask you to bless this time. I pray that you give me supernatural communication skills that even the newest person who's never heard of you, your word, never been around church, that even they would understand and embrace the truth that they do something special in this place. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen, and amen. This is where I'm going to go deep next week, but I'm going to launch this week from this verse. Not going to crawl in it much, but just want to launch from it. 2 Corinthians 10, I think verses 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, okay, I'm here, I'm in the flesh right here. Here's my body. Here I am. I'm present in this body. So though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to it. Okay. My battle is not you. Your battle is not people. I wish sometime when everybody's arguing in the house, we would have somebody stand up and say, Oh, you're not the enemy. There's another enemy in here and we got to cast him out in Jesus name. Sometimes when your teenager comes in rebellious, it's not your teenager, it's a spirit. <laughs> Do you see what I'm talking about? We don't war against it for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means fleshly. <laughs> it means natural. They're not natural, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So my warfare now is strongholds. My warfare is not to beat the devil. My warfare is not to win. Jesus has already won. My warfare now is to get my head straight. Because you can be saved and have the right heart and have the wrong head. I'm going to say that again. I meet them all the time. Have a great heart. But their thinking is terrible. Here's the problem. As a man thinketh. Okay, so strongholds are when lies are believed to be true. The weapons of our warfare are mighty for the pulling down of lies. Let me define them further. This is, I'm gonna get really, get down in here next week. These lies are arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against what God says. If God says you're blessed, and you look at your life and say, I must be cursed. That is against the knowledge of God. And look what has to happen. Every thought has to be brought into captivity and has to be made to obey Christ. Now let me tell you something clinical right here. This is science, this is not faith, okay? You have to deal with your thoughts. You can't let thoughts randomly just rest in your head. You've got to be intentional about your thought life because that's the new battlefield once you get saved is how you think and what you believe to be true. Okay? Are we on the same page? You kind of, okay, well, all right, we got an amen on that. You have got to take every thought and find where did it come from? What is its origin? And if it is against the knowledge of God, you have got to cast that thought down and make it obey Christ. The word Christ means anointing. I'll show this to you in a minute. Ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait. This is a good teaching. It really is. But science says if a thought, if you meditate on it 30 seconds, it is then accompanied by a feeling. 
And then you have to deal with the thought and the feeling. And the feeling is harder to shake than the thought. So you can think about everything that's gone wrong in your life. You got 30 seconds before depression hits. Then you got to deal with the depression when all you had to do was deal with the thought. Because the Bible says, is there anything good? Is there anything noble? Is there anything praiseworthy? Think on these things. Think on these things. So those of you who really had a bad week, I promise you, you got something to praise God about. If nothing else, the fact that you got out of your bed and had air in your lungs, and when you stood up, your feet worked, and when you went to the refrigerator, there was food in it, and somebody needs to quit worrying about, they said this, and they did that, and they abandoned me, and my mom did this, and I ain't seen my dad. Somebody needs to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You cast that thought out of your mind and feel that room up with the presence of God. I feel like preaching today. <laughs> Bringing every thought captive and making it obey Christ. All right. I need you guys help. Will you help me again? I'm coming back on the stage. We are doing an illustrated sermon. <laughs> Give a hand for the three guys that are going to stand up here with me the next few minutes. Okay, you are spirit, but you want to be flesh, don't you? No, no, no. Come on, you're flesh. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, you're flesh right here. You're spirit right there. You made a good mind. I want you to be in the middle right here. Come on over just a little bit right here. Okay. Romans 7. This is where I left off. We're going deep. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it's no longer I who do it, but sin who dwells in me. He's writing this to Christians. He's not writing this to lost people. He's writing it to people who are still doing stupid stuff even though they've been saved. Okay? I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one that wills to do good. So let me show you right here. We got spirit. We got soul, which is our mind, and we got flesh, which is our body, okay? These two guys, before you got saved, were just fine. You had a flesh, it sends signals to him and says, I want this, I want that, I want her. <laughs> Come on. It's going to get a whole lot more real than this. So if you can't handle this, we're not doing good. Amen. He's constantly sending signals, but he's the decision maker. He just has desires. He has a want to. <clears throat> okay. Now, for those of you who've bought into this lie, well, you just need to do what makes you feel good. Okay. That means turn him loose. Okay, do that for about five years and come back and tell me how that's working for you. You ain't never seen such a schizophrenic life because this guy has no idea what he wants. The Bible says there's nothing good in my flesh. No good dwells. So he's sending him signals and the Bible says if any two agree in the earth, that it's done. So when he sends him a desire and he says yes to it, then in that agreement, they go out and they act it out. That becomes conduct and behavior. But conduct and behavior doesn't start with conduct and behavior. It starts with a desire and it starts with it sending a signal. And then the yes man says yes to the desire. But then you come to redemption and you get saved. And here comes spirit. Because when you get saved, you get born of water and the Spirit. We baptize you and the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you from that moment forward. Those 13 or so that just accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you just as much as he lives in me right now. Okay? So now, he comes in and he's got desires. You say, how? Let me show you. Keep reading. Romans 7. For I delight in the law of God according to my inward man. So now he's moved in the apartment 
and he wants to do what God wants. But them two have been together a long time. But this guy's going to try to get them two to get a divorce. <laughs> but right now, three's a crowd. Because he's sending signals. And now we've gotten saved and he's sending signals. This dude is confused. Can we go deeper? But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. So I delight in the law of God according to my inward man, but I see another law at work in my body, in my flesh, and it wars against my head. A law means to be drawn to the wrong conclusion. I see another law trying to get my mind to draw the wrong conclusion. Whoo! I delight in the law of God here. I love Jesus, I genuinely got saved. I wanna do the right thing, I wanna live for him, I want him to be pleased with my life. But this guy right here, man, he's had the reins for a long time. Let's keep reading. Y'all are so quiet. Warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity. This guy won't stop. And he's making him draw wrong conclusions. And then when he acts on them, all of a sudden I see my life locked in the same cycle, messing with the same people, doing the same thing, taking the same drug, having the same addiction, dating the same person. I say, ah. Captive Christians. We call them hypocrites. They're not hypocrites, they're captives. Nobody wakes up and says, I think I want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> but they've been saved. But he has not been affected by that decision. And as of right now, he has not been affected by that decision. Because just because you said the sinner's prayer does not mean your head has changed at all. <laughs> so if we never conquer him, here's what we do. We learn how to hide. So we come to church and we've learned how to act for 90 minutes to make us blend. But then we go home and it's the same old thing as if I never got saved. Is this all right, baby? Next verse, please. Oh, wretched man. I love this. Oh, wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death. I told about this, I think, the last, the, the last part of last year. So don't wanna, I don't want to nail down here, but just for the imagery sake. The Romans, this is the, Ro this is the church in Rome that he's writing to. So... Paul is using language they can relate to because the Romans had two ways to execute you. One was by crucifixion. We saw that with Jesus. But the other, if you were a murderer in Rome, they could either crucify you or they could sentence you to having the dead body of the person you murdered. They would stretch you out like a cross and then they would take the dead carcass and strap it to you wrist to wrist, elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, neck to neck, torso to torso, leg to leg, and make you carry that dead body around on your back until the gangrene of that body had overcome you and killed you. That's the imagery he's using. He said, I got this guy. I want to do the right thing, but he will not leave him alone. And who will deliver me from this body of death? Oh, wretched man that I am. I'm tired of getting up every day and wanting to do the right thing, but executing the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. Next verse. Then he says, I thank God through Jesus, the anointing. So with my mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Oh my goodness. Now, let's review. My mind is, my soul is my mind, my will, my emotions. My spirit is my inner man, which delights in the law of God. 
My flesh is what's been destroying my life all this time. Some of y'all think the devil's been destroying your life. No, it's turning him loose. He don't need a, no help from a devil. Okay, you want to ruin your life? Turn your flesh loose. It'll be ruined for supper time. <laughs> okay. Now, the Bible lets us know that he has been saved. When you're born of the Spirit, in that arena of your life, you have been per made perfect, and you cannot increase on that. We know he is being saved. He ain't saved. I came up in the holiness church. They tried their best to save him. Women couldn't wear makeup. Women couldn't cut their hair. Men had to have their sleeves a certain length. That's what I came up in, okay? They did their best to save this guy. He ain't saved. Okay, everything he can do before he got saved, he can do after he got saved. The Bible says this guy don't get saved till I get to heaven. Where this mortality puts on immortality, this corruptible puts on incorruptible, and I get a glorified body. What is a glorified body? It's not a body with perfect measurements. It's a body that doesn't fight you. So when I get to heaven, I'll have a body that cooperates with me spiritually and not fights me spiritually. Okay? Are you still here? I'm breaking it down. Am I breaking it down? Okay. So here's the conflict. Oh, wretched man that I am. I'm confused. This is not fun. I was with him, and yeah, we made a lot of problems for ourselves, but at least I wasn't confused. Now, he has moved in the apartment, and three is a crowd. So now I got two sets of desires coming toward me and I don't know which one to make. Let me tell you which decision you will make. You will make the decision to whichever one you feed. Anything that has to grow has to be fed. Okay? Now, you wonder why you keep doing what you do. But you've been on Instagram seven hours. You've been on YouTube an hour and a half. The music and the lyrics going in your ears is filthy. Oh, y'all, I'm going there. I'm going there. Come on. I'm going there. And what you watch late at night on Netflix is highly questionable. And you get 30 minutes of preaching on Sunday. Some of y'all looking at me later. Can I make it plain? Yes. I told you I committed you four years ago. I'll always tell you the truth. I'll always tell you the truth. This guy is getting destroyed. He doesn't have a chance. He's on a fast. And he's at the buffet. <laughs> and he's a monster and his voice is rarely even recognizable. You don't read your Bible to memorize verses. You read your Bible to grow your spirit. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? You don't go to church because they have the best children's ministry or the most kicking music or the nicest facility. There better be a word going out in that house because that word is what builds up your spirit and allows you Monday morning when you get up to tell your flesh to sit down and shut up. You will not rule my life. I will be born of the spirit. I will walk in the spirit. I will live in the spirit. Come on, somebody. I'll be baptized in the spirit. The flesh is not going to destroy the purpose of God in my life. Somebody take 10 seconds if you believe that and shout hallelujah. <laughs> High five your neighbor say, this is setting you free. This is setting you free. <laughs> Romans 8. We just finished Romans 7. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? I want to do it. I don't do it. The thing I hate, I always do it. There's a law in my flesh working against my mind, making my mind bring the wrong conclusions. Who will deliver me? It's not fun living like this. There is therefore, now no, Romans chapter 8 may be the greatest chapter in the whole Bible. It is a chapter of liberty and victory.
Man, if you can't preach Romans 8, you ain't called. <laughs> but Romans 7 leads up to it. And Romans 7 is a chapter of conflict. <laughs> I got David the king. But there's a little boy inside the king that wants to destroy the king. So it takes him off with Bathsheba. Because the king never got rid of the little boy. <sighs> Romans 8 verse 1. There is now no condemnation. Boy, this is the people love this verse. For those that are in Christ Jesus, comma. <laughs> Not period. I never hear anybody read past the comma. They just say, there's now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Who do not walk according to him. So if you're saved, but you still got him in the driver's seat, you will feel condemnation. You will feel internally that you are living beneath Everything that God, it is for freedom that Christ set you free. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And if you accept anything less, you are living in condemnation. You are living underneath the privileges that God has for you. My God, I'm preaching this thing. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The condemnation leaves when I start acting like what just happened to me. I got saved, now I start conducting myself like I got saved. <laughs> Heard a person say one time, talking about all the hypocrites in the church, he said the church would be all right if it wasn't for people. <laughs> this person was talking about, they say it, but they don't live it. I'm preaching that contradiction. Let's keep going. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death. Next verse. Let's go on to verse five. For here is the verse that all of chapter seven hangs on like a Christmas ornament. Here it is. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind Those who live according to the Spirit set their mind. Could it be that this whole freedom and victory thing is a mindset? <laughs> I can be wherever and whatever I set my mind to. I can start thinking about my grandkids at Christmas and joy will fill my soul. I can start thinking about my father who passed away so young he didn't get to meet his grandkids and how he won't be there for Christmas and I can fall deep into sorrow. It's just a matter of where I choose to set my mind. If he is the focus, He's in charge. If he's the focus, he's in charge. How much time of your week is giving, grow, given to growing your spirit? <laughs> but then we complain that we end up in the same old mess. You know who's causing it? Not the devil. Let me prove it. Next verse. For to be carnally minded is death. To let him rule my thoughts, something's deteriorating. If he rules the thoughts about your marriage, your marriage is going to start dying. If he rules the thoughts about your money, your economy is going to start dying. Come on. If he rules how you run your relationships, your relationships are going to begin to deteriorate. Whatever he's in charge of does not go up. It goes down. 
But to be spiritually minded is life and, oh, I love peace. I love peace. I'm 54 years old and it's the most precious commodity in the world. Does anybody else really like peace at this age in your life? If you are drama filled, I will avoid you like COVID. So to set my mind on him is peaceful. This is the kicker. Because the carnal mind is the enemy of God. Y'all thought Satan was his enemy. God disposed of Satan. So even Satan knows that a carnal mind is God's enemy. That's why he's the father of lies. He just has to get you to think it. I am. The carnal mind is the enemy of God. It is not subject to God, nor can it be. I want to live a Christian life. I want to live a Christian life. I want to do the right thing. The carnal mind is not subject to him. Nor can it be. It's impossible to leave your mind alone and live right. It's impossible to leave your mind alone and live right. Can I go a little bit deeper? Ooh, I've been up here over a half hour. Can I finish? I know who plays at one o'clock. That's why I'm asking you. Okay. Uh, go to Colossians 3. If then, I'm sweating in this big old sweatshirt, man. I'm, if then you were raised with Christ, Christ means what? Starts with an A. Anointing. Anointing means the Holy Spirit now lives in you. If you now have been raised because you're anointed, seek those things which are above where the anointing is. So in other words, my mind becoming like God is not natural, it's intentional. The godly life does not evolve naturally. It is salt. I have to seek it. It is intentional. This right here is what happens naturally, but I have to put effort into making my mind think like God thinks. If you were raised through Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your mind on things above and not on things over here. Third time, it's a mindset. Pastor, how am I going to get free from this? Free your mind from it. Because if you can whip it in your head, you can whip it in your life. <laughs> See, I used to think the Bible was just a spiritual book and didn't know how much it talked about the mind. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ. Whoa, whoa. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. So when you got saved, God didn't take you and put on some new makeup. You are a new species of being that has never existed before. Okay? Verse 3, back up there, please, if you would, just a moment. For you died. In other words, when, Christ, when you got saved, the old you died. And who you really are whoo, is not hidden in him. Is not hidden in him. Your life is hidden with the anointing in God. Where did this guy get his information? The tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But if you've been raised with Christ, he takes who you really are and hides it in your born again spirit man. So your spirit knows your past, your present, and your future. It's in him. I stop right here, Romans 12. Go straight to verse two. Go straight to verse two. And do not be conformed to him, 
but be transformed by renewing him that you may be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The will of God is hidden in your anointing. So renew your mind. That word prove means allow. Make him think like him so that when he speaks, he allows it. I'm telling you, I'm wearing this sermon out. Getting him to think like him. He knows who you really are. He knows what God said. He knows who you can be. He knows your purpose. He knows your potential. Okay? He knows your gifts. He knows the grace of God on your life. He knows everything. He don't. But he makes the decision. So I got to take the word of God and I got to wash him out of him. And then I got to fill him with him. So set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above where the anointing is. I end with this. Your life will not arrive at your anointing. It will arrive at your think. So what if you're anointed for it, but you can't think it? That's that frustration on the inside of you. The Bible says that the Spirit of God don't grieve him. How can you grieve the Holy Spirit when he knows who you really are, but you let him take you with a group of people you have no business being around? And then all of a sudden, now you lose your peace. And now you go into that place and it's not as enjoyable. And now you get around those people and you kind of look around and say, these people ain't going where I'm going. Why am I sitting here with these folk? Because your spirit's grieving. Because he knows who you really are. And he knows you put yourself in an environment that is contrary to that. Do you see what I'm saying? What if you've been anointed to be a billionaire, but you think like a pauper? What if you've been anointed to be the head, but you think like you're the tail? What if you've been anointed to be a great spouse, but you view yourself as valueless? You don't arrive at your anointing. You arrive at your think. And you have to learn how to think on the level of your anointing. I'm gonna stop right there. Let's give Jesus praise. Thank you, gentlemen, for helping me out. Would you stand with me all over the building? <laughs> I want you to tell three or four people, say, this is life-changing. Tell them, say, this. <laughs> How many of you have ever done dumb, dumb things? Then how many of you have turned right around and said, why did I do that dumb thing? You just got it. Does it make sense? Ain't it amazing the Word of God, most of it written 2,000 years ago, can fall right in your lap in 2022 and change your life? That's amazing to me. <laughs> amazing to me. Before you come in next week, that arguments and things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God and taking every thought captive, I'm going deep there next week. I want you to do something for me. This is not in the Word. This is my experience. So I want to differentiate that. Some preachers will preach their opinion like it's Word. This is my experience. My experience has been the most difficult thing to unlearn is the first thing you were taught. I call it the law of first truth. If you got a little five-year-old who set out with his grandfather on a pier and fished and his grandfather taught him to be a racist, it is hard for that five-year-old to unlearn that because that was the first thing that was driven in him. It's the law of first truth. 
And there's some of us that believe some erroneous things in here, and I need you to give me permission with the Word of God to come sideways on that. Because I'm not preaching it to offend you, I'm preaching it to liberate you. Because God cares too much about you to let you live lies. Next week's going to be amazing. Bring a friend. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you peace and help us drive in the rain. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. See you next week. God bless you. Have a great day. Wow. That word truly blessed me. If it touched your heart as well, know that you can listen to it all over again for free by going to roncarpenter.com slash message. Tis the season for giving. Here's Pastor Hope on how you can have an even greater impact this holiday season. First of all, I want to tell you a little bit about Hope Carpenter Ministries and what we do globally, worldwide. We are 100% mission driven. We give to the missions in Colima, Mexico monthly. We give every Christmas. We give at school time. We provide uniforms and backpacks. We give to the Dominican Republic. For years, we've had a church there paying for their salaries, paying for the worship team, paying to feed people, paying for our el elderly home every single month, providing them shelter and food. And now also in Italy, we have an outreach in Italy uh, for our church there. Our heart is to help people. Our heart is to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. And every year, thank you Facebook for having Giving Tuesday. And this is where we raise a bulk of our money that provides us help throughout the year. You never really ever hear me come on any platform or even in our church services and ask for missions money. I believe God to supply the need, but Facebook every year has given us an opportunity to raise money on Giving Tuesday. Well, this year, they have totally changed their platform in the way that they're doing it. And it's now going to be a giving season, a whole season from now until December 31st. And what they are doing, Facebook is matching dollar for dollar up to $7 million, but not just on one-time gifts, which that's what they've done in the past, but on reoccurring donations only, which, hey, that's amazing. I believe we all should be giving monthly anyway to missions, to help people, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. So your donation helps us reach people in need all over the world. So go to Hope Carpenter Dot com for more information and sow your seed today to help somebody live a better life. Yes, it's not a one-time gift anymore. It's reoccurring. But if we had a thousand people giving $25 a month and Facebook matches it, look what God could do. You say, I can't do $25. I can do 10 or 15. And there are many people listening to me who can do a hundred a month. Then that Facebook makes it 200 a month or a thousand a month. Ask God what he would have you do. Go to hopecarpenter.com for more information and give today. Are you ready for New Year's Eve at Redemption? Join us on December 31st right here online at 10 p.m. Eastern a spectacular worship experience, and a word that will alter the course of your life awaits. Redemption, pray and agree for five things that you are believing for in 2023. Don't miss this opportunity to join your family in Christ at this night of prophetic vision and worship. We can't wait to see you online. Tree of Hope is going strong. If you would like to be a blessing to children in Italy or Mexico, you can give a monetary gift online until December 18th. Let's show these kids redemption love this Christmas. Now, let's hear more from Pastor Hope. Hello, Redemption. I am so excited to tell you this is our second annual Tree of Hope. Last year, we were able to bless around 
500 or so families with clothes, bicycles, toys, gift cards, everything that would make a kid's Christmas merry and bright. But this year, we have over 800 families between both coasts and online supporting our missions in Italy and Colima, Mexico. There is nothing more fulfilling than being able to pour into the lives of people who are struggling, been out of jobs, single moms, and then lift the burden to help make Christmas possible for their children. Join me this year in making Tree of Hope even more successful by grabbing as many tags as your little heart desires and by giving online as well, don't forget that part, to our missions and our outreach to make Christmas so spectacular to the people in need. If today's message touched your heart, please consider sowing into this ministry by giving. Just visit roncarpenter.com to give and to learn more about us. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next week here on iChurch Live.